Now, as howling winds echo across the snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereal shot from guns, in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System, present by special recording, Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. <coughs> it's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, breaking a trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. And ding! On you, Husky! <laughs> gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. And the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> Our adventure will begin in just a moment. Enemy bombers can now reach any part of these United States. A devastating air attack could be launched against us at any moment. To meet this threat, we must have early warning. That's why one million civilian volunteers are desperately needed in the Ground Observer Corps. To meet this threat of a surprise attack, our armed forces and radar network are on the job day and night. But radar has its limitations. Hostile aircraft could sneak through undetected. Our defenses are incomplete without a strong ground observer corps. And one million volunteers, men, women, retired people, and teenagers are desperately needed. Just a few hours a week of your spare time, that's all you need give. Do your part. Contact your civil defense office and join the ground observer corps today. This message is brought to you as a public service. The prisoner had been caught red-handed with the gold from the express office on his sled. And Sergeant Preston had no difficulty in obtaining a full confession. I sure hope the agent's all right. The agent died the day before yesterday, and the charge against you was murder. No, I didn't shoot him. I didn't even have a gun. I never carry a gun. You know you didn't find any gun on me, Sergeant. You took part in the robbery. That makes you an accessory to the murder. It was Dirk. Dirk Jordan shot him. I'll testify to that. They'll go easy on me if I give evidence for the Crown, won't they, Sergeant? I make no promises. Well, I've told you just how it happened. I'll swear to it on the witness stand. Where's Dirk now? Well, after we left Dawson, Dirk and I split up. Why? We knew you'd be looking for two men. I kept the gold because I was keeping the team in the sled. Dirk doesn't know anything about dogs. We decided to meet at Beaver Falls. That's a little town east of the Yukon near the border. I know where it is. When were you supposed to meet Dirk, huh? Well, let's see. We split up three days ago. Should be there tomorrow. And he'll expect to find you there. Yeah. What'll he do when he doesn't? I don't know. At the hotel, he'll probably wait. Unless he decides something's happened to him. Well, even so, he'll have to wait. He doesn't have much money on him. But he does have a gun. Well, I'm sending you back to Dawson with Constable Downey. You're going after Dirk? Of course. Be careful, Sergeant. He, he goes berserk when he has a gun in his hands. I, I should never have got mixed up with him. You knew what kind of a man he was, and you planned the robbery. No, Sergeant, I swear. Not until I saw the look in his eyes when the agent caught us. All right, all right. Here's your statement. Read it over and sign it, and you can get started for Dawson with the constable. At 9 o'clock in the morning, two days later, John Gates walked down the hall on the second floor of his hotel in Beaver Falls and knocked on the door of room 210. Come on, Al, wake up. Thought you wanted to hit the trail early. It's nine o'clock. There was no answer. Mm. John opened the door and walked in. Al Pierce was lying on the floor unconscious. Al. John knelt beside him and lifted his head. Oh. The prospector groaned and slowly opened his eyes. Oh. What's the matter? What happened? Oh, he, he hit me. He hit me with the barrel of his gun. Oh, my head. Who, who are you talking about? That... That big hombre with a black beard and a scar across his forehead. Uh, Jackson. He's got the room next door. Bet you won't find him there now. What happened? I woke up. I was, it was just getting light. I saw somebody going through the pockets of my coat. I, I yelled and he turned. It was Jackson. He started to get up and he hit me. Here. I'll help you up. Help you to the bed. 
Uh, I'm all right. Hey, wait a minute. Let me see. See if I scared him off. No. Got what he's after. Your poke's gone? Sure. Much in it? Oh, only about six ounces of dust. I'll take a look in his room. Uh, cleared out all right. Must have slipped out the back door. Morning, John. Oh, Sergeant oh, Preston and King. Who's here? Glad to see you, Sergeant. Come on in here. You remember Al Pierce? Oh, of course. Hello, Sergeant. We got a robbery to report. A fellow named Jackson came in here this morning, pinched Al's poke, and knocked him out. That's a nasty bruise, Al. Oh, I'm all right now, and he didn't get much. Less than a hundred dollars. The man's name was Jackson? That's what he called himself. Big, black beard, a scar on his forehead. Looked like a crook. He is. The man I'm after. His name isn't Jackson, it's Jordan, Dirk Jordan. He's wanted for robbery and murder in Dawson. Murder? Hey, I was lucky. When did he get here? Yesterday afternoon. Said he expected to meet his partner. His partner's in jail by now. Jordan's gone, of course. Yeah. I don't suppose you have any idea which direction he took. No, I didn't see him go. He skipped out without paying his bill. Probably heading north and out of the country if he's wanted for murder. Well, he didn't get much money from you, and all the stolen gold was on his partner's sled. Crossing the border is simple enough, but to travel all the way to St. Michael would be different. He'd need more money, supplies, dogs, and a sled. He didn't have a team, did he? No. He might have stolen one in town. I'll check. Hey, I have an idea. What's that, Al? Well, last night we were talking about the big strikes in the district, and somebody mentioned Ed Latimer and Jerry Carter. What about them? Well, uh, it, it, uh, it was Harry, I think. He said they'd been throwing snow and panning gravel all winter long. But they were getting close to $100 to the pan. Well, this stranger was mighty interested. Wanted to know all about their claim. Where is it? Across the ridge on Wishbone Creek. Still north. Yeah. Those two haven't been to town all winter. They must have plenty of gold. Harry said the same thing. And supplies and dogs? Sure. This Jackson, or Jordan, was plenty interested. Then the boy started kidding me about my strike, asking me how many millions I had stashed away. That's where he got the idea of robbing me. Apparently. Wishbone Creek. Uh, thanks, Al. It's the lead worth following. But first, I'll ask around town. There might be someone who saw Jordan leaving. Come on, King. <laughs> There were no dog teams missing in Beaver Falls. The sergeant was unable to locate anyone who had seen Dirk Jordan leave town. However, just as he was preparing to start out, John Gates pushed his way through the crowd around his sled, dragging an Indian by the arm. Just a minute, sergeant. Here's Joe Taggish. He might know something. Me not steal nothing, sergeant. Of course not, Joe. When did you get into town? Only half hour ago. But he came from the direction of Pine Ridge. That's where he trapped. Uh, All we want to know is whether you saw anyone on the trail. Uh, one fella. So see him come. Not like look. Me hide beside trail. What this man look like? He got plenty hair on face. Him maybe in fight once. Here. Big here. scar here. Uh, There's Jordan. No doubt about it. He was heading north, Joe? Uh, Toward Pine Ridge. And across the ridge, there's Wishbone Creek and the border. You catch him. Yes, I must. He even got big start. But he's traveling on foot. Oh, that's right. King can do it. I'll catch him before he reaches the border. Up front, King. <laughs> All right. On King! On It was snowing hard as the team raced out of town. But King was working as a loose lead, breaking the trail. And he set a fast pace. On and on. Faster and faster toward the distant ridge. On, King! <laughs> they reached it at noon. There was no trail, and the slope was heavily wooded, so the sergeant let King pick his own way. <laughs> Halfway to the top, he heard the sharp yelp of a puppy somewhere in the woods to his left. He looked back at the sergeant and barked. <laughs> this was something that should be investigated. <laughs> oh, no. Yes, I heard him too, King. What's a puppy doing in this wilderness? Go on, find him, boy. <laughs> King started through the trees with the sergeant close behind. A new scent reached the dog. The scent of a wolverine, and King increased his pace. Hello, King. All right, go on, boy. I'll catch up with you. <laughs> King dashed ahead. When he reached the edge of a small clearing, he saw the puppy, small and pure white. The wolverine was crouched at the bottom of a huge pine. The puppy was inviting him to play, dashing toward him with mock ferocity and then away. The wolverine was waiting for the puppy to come close enough to be raked by his murderous teeth. As King ran forward, the wolverine struck him, knocked him off his feet. But before he could close in for the kill, King was on top of him. The great dog's jaws clamped on the back of the wolverine's neck and tossed him high in the air. He landed in the middle of the clearing, snarling. In the next second, a shot rang out. A bullet from the sergeant's gun had ended the wolverine's vicious career. 
The sergeant hurried to the puppy and picked him up. There, there, little fella. It isn't so bad. We'll fix you up in no time at all. Come on, King. Back to the sled. Our young friend here needs some first aid. Oh, 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 oh. The puppy had been bandaged and was nestling in a warm blanket when the sergeant heard a man calling him from higher up the ridge. Wait! Wait, where are you? Wait! There he is, this way. Oh, 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 oh. Where? Oh, there you are. I was looking for a puppy. A white Siberian. This the one on my sled? Whitey! Hey, what's the matter with him, the bandage? He tried to play with a wolverine. Well, well, wouldn't you know? He got away early this morning. I've been looking for him for hours. Where do you live? The other side of the ridge. Wishbone Creek. Are you either Ed Latimer or Jerry Carter? Why, yes, I'm Latimer. I'm Sergeant Preston, Northwest Mounted. Have you seen a big man with a black beard and a scar on his forehead this morning? Oh, I haven't seen anyone. Well, I have an idea that he's on his way to your cabin. May have reached there by now. Who is this man? Name's Dirk Jordan. He's dangerous. A killer. Sergeant, I've got to get back to the cabin fast. If I'm on board the sled, I'll give you a lift. It's my partner. I left them all alone there. He's in no condition. There's no telling what he might do. Tell me on the way. Climb on board. All right. On King! On the We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. You should have been at the ball game today. I saw three home runs. And guess what? I got one of the home run balls. Fellas and girls, why don't you get a free baseball ticket? It's easy. Come out to the ball game as guest of a major or minor league team. Your free ticket is waiting for you right now inside packages of Quaker Puff Wheat, Quaker Puff Rice, Muffet Shredded Wheat, and Quaker Paco 10, which has two free baseball tickets. Yes, if you are 12 years or younger, just bring mom or dad or another paying adult and see wonderful major or minor league baseball games free. Names of teams and dates are on every ticket. Get as many free tickets as you want. No mailing, no waiting. When mom buys breakfast cereal, just be sure she gets the kind with a free baseball ticket inside. That's Quaker Pop wheat and rice and Muffet shredded wheat. You get two free baseball tickets inside Quaker Paco 10. So don't miss out another day. See the star players wallop those home runs. Now to continue. As King and the sergeant's team plowed through the drifted snow toward the top of the ridge, Ed Latimer told the sergeant a strange story. What are you going to say about your partner? I have to keep him locked up. What? That's a funny case, sergeant. I better tell you all about it. Three months ago, he had a nasty fall and hit his head. He fractured his skull. For a while, I thought he was going to die. But then he snapped out of it. He got stronger every day. He's strong as an ox now. But... But what? Well, he isn't right in his head. Oh. Well, I don't mean he's crazy. It's just one thing. A delusion, I suppose you call it. You see, Jerry comes from Georgia. He's always found this cold hard to take. He's hated it. Yes? Now he thinks he's back home. I've tried to talk him out of it, but it only seems to make him confused. He starts complaining of an ache in his head. So I've just decided to let well enough alone. As soon as the weather breaks a little, I intend to take him down to the hospital in Dawson. Good idea. Doc Monday's a good man. Well, why do you have to keep him locked up? Well, I don't all the time, only I have to be away for quite a while. It's dangerous to think you're in southern Georgia when the temperature is really 40 below. Yes. He goes outside in his shirt sleeves. He doesn't seem to pay any attention to the temperature at all. But that won't keep him from freezing a hand or a foot. I can see your problem. So you locked him up before you left the cabin this morning. Yep. I joked about it, said he wasn't strong enough to do any work. And I was locking him in to make sure he didn't. I used a padlock. A strong padlock? Oh, not very. Be easy to break it with a rock. This killer you're looking for wouldn't find it hard to get inside the cabin. Then... Does Jerry have a gun? No, we have only one, his shotgun. So Jordan could force an entrance. Yeah. It's what might happen when he gets inside that I'm worried about. The reason I think he's heading for your place is that he wants gold and supplies. If your partner gives them to him without any argument... Oh, not be... Jerry. He's an easygoing guy most of the time, but when he loses his temper... Would he argue with a gun? Well, he might not under ordinary circumstances, but with his mind all mixed up the way it is, there's no telling. That's why I'm worried. We're getting to the top of the ridge. Yeah, not many trees on the far side. We'll make good climb from here. Too bad it's snowing so hard. We could see the cabin. There's a chance we'll make it before Jordan does. On, King! On, you husky! Oh, 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 oh. 
But as the sergeant and Ed started down the long slope of the ridge, Dirk Jordan was standing in front of the cabin. The padlock on the door made him suppose there was no one inside, and he laughed to himself. <laughs> he opened his pocket and slipped one of his two guns from its holster. Then he changed his mind and dropped the gun into the pocket of his pocket. Ah, why waste ammunition? He picked up a rock and with a few well-aimed blows broke the padlock. <laughs> then he opened the door and walked in. The kitchen door opened and... Thank you, Ed. Oh, hello. Come on in. I am in. Shut the door. Sit down. Make yourself comfortable. Where's your partner? Ed? Oh, he's out looking for our pup. Are you a friend of Ed? I haven't got any time to waste. <laughs> now, if that isn't just like a Yankee. You are a Yankee, I know. I can tell from the way you talk. But if you're a friend of Ed, you're a friend of mine. What brings you down south? Down, down south? Well, I'll admit it isn't as far south as Florida, but Georgia's still below the Mason-Dixon line, and that's all that counts. Hey, are you nuts? <laughs> Don't let it bother you. Uh, how about a nice, long, cool drink, huh? It'll be back soon if he finds out I haven't shown you some real you southern show hospitality. You've plenty of hospitality. Dirk's hand came out of the pocket of his pocket with a gun in it. Now, where's the gold? What gold? Don't stall your gold. Don't tell me you haven't got any. I know better. You've been panning it out all winter. Gold? Where is it? I don't know. You better find out mighty fast. You see this gun, don't you? Yeah. I I've been wondering about it. Smart, huh? Well, I'll explain. This is a holdup. I want gold. I want supplies. I want a dog sled and a team. So you're not a friend of Ed? I never said I was. Get the gold and haul out some supplies or I'll put a bullet through your head. I don't like you, mister. Move! If there's any gold here, it must belong to Ed, and you're not going to lay a finger on it. As for supplies, all you had to do is ask for them like a gentleman. I'd have given you all we could spare. Get moving or I'll shoot. Huh? A threat like that don't scare me one little bit, mister. I'm no fire eater, but when a no-good son of a carpetbagger comes into my home and starts ordering me around, I figure something ought to be done about it. There we are. <laughs> Jerry stooped down and picked up a heavy piece of wood from beside the stove. Then he started moving toward Dirk. Oh, shoot. I mean it, you fool. I've killed men before, and I don't mind doing it again. When my daddy used to get mad, he'd let out a yell. The rebel yell. It's a funny thing, mister, but I feel like yelling myself. One more step. <laughs> Just as Dirk squeezed the trigger, Jerry's foot came up from the floor and hit his gun hand. Then the club cracked down on Dirk's skull. Dirk dropped. His gun slid across the floor and under the cupboard. Jerry stared at the killer for a moment, shook his head, and reaching down, grabbed hold of the collar of Dirk's parka. He dragged him into the kitchen. A few moments later, he returned to the living room, shutting the door behind him. He took a few steps toward his cot, stopped, and raised a hand to his head. The hand was red when he looked at it. He slumped to the floor. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Say, why aren't you fellas and girls out at the ballpark these days, watching those home runs walloped into the grandstands, eating peanuts, popcorn, and hot dogs? Come out to the ball game as guest of a major or minor league team. All over the country, kids 12 years or younger are seeing major or minor league games free. All you do is bring mom or dad or another paying adult. And you get your free baseball ticket immediately inside packages of Quaker Pop wheat, Quaker Pop rice, and Muffet shredded wheat. You'll find two free baseball tickets inside Quaker Paco 10. Names of teams and dates are on every ticket. So be guest of your favorite team at the ballpark. Rush to the store with your mom and grab free baseball ticket packages of Quaker Pop wheat or rice, Muffet shredded wheat, or Quaker Paco 10, which has two free tickets. The more packages of these delicious Quaker cereals you get, the more free baseball tickets you get. Now to continue. The sergeant and Ed had heard Jerry's yell and the shot when they were halfway down the ridge. It took them another 15 minutes to reach the cabin. Hulking! Pull your husband! Pull him off! Better stay back, Ed. Oh, he's gone by now. He has plenty of time to make us get away. Stay back. With gun drawn, the sergeant moved swiftly to the door with King beside him. He thrust it open and stepped swiftly to one side. There was only silence inside the cabin. 
and King seemed anxious to enter, so the sergeant stepped over the threshold. King trotted directly to the man on the floor. The partner's wounded, then. What? Not dead? No. Are you sure? The scalp wound, deep, but I think he'll pull through. Would you get my first aid kit? I have antiseptic in the roll of bandages right here. Oh, please. Right. Here you are. Pour some of the antiseptic in a pan. I want to wash this thoroughly. Sure. That crook must have shot Jerry, taken the gold, and skipped out the back way. They won't get far. We'll go after him as soon as we take care of this. Here's the antiseptic right on the bench beside you. Oh, thanks. Where was your gold hidden? It wasn't. The bag was in plain view on the shelf. What? The sergeant is still here. It hasn't been touched. He left without taking it. He must have hurt your team. We scared him away. Take my gun look out the back way and see if there are any tracks. Jerry, he's coming, too. Yeah, it's the thing of the antiseptic. It's powerful stuff. It's cool. Better shut the door. Right. All right, Whitey, you can come in. Hurry up. Yes, Jerry. Yeah, the Yankee. I thought he was a friend of yours at first. Wore a big fur coat. Funny thing down here in Georgia. Down here in... What am I talking about? Where am I? In our cabin, Wishbone Creek. Wishbone Creek. It must have been a dream. I thought I was home in Georgia instead of up here in this icebox. You thought? Home. Can you imagine it? Sergeant, he's all over it. His mind's okay. Drastic surgery. I still do. Yeah, but there was a man here. Yes, Jerry, we know. He wanted gold and supplies. No gentleman, Ed. Made me mad. I didn't care about his gun. I was going to throw him out. I did throw him out. No, no, pal. He shot you. Yeah, but I had a piece of wood. I hit him over the head, then I dragged him outside. Didn't you see him when you come in? Take it easy, Jerry. Easy. Just forget all of yeah, But don't you believe me? Steady, Jerry. I'll be finished with this bandage in a minute. Who are you? Well, he's Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police. What's the matter with King? I don't know. He's looking at the kitchen door. Wait a minute. Jerry may be telling the truth. About what? About knocking Jordan out. And instead of dragging him outside, he dragged him into the kitchen. Jerry was shot and dazed. He didn't actually know what he was doing. Ed, I gave you my gun. Where is it? On the table. Get it. Cover that door. <laughs> no sooner had the sergeant spoken than the kitchen door slammed open. Dirk stood in the doorway with a gun in his hand. King stood between him and the sergeant, who was still kneeling beside Jerry. Ed stood beside the table. Out that gun over here, Latimer. The one on the table. And hurry it up. Why, you... Those are those. Here. Now get your gold, Latimer. All right. Sergeant Preston. <laughs> That's a good one. Sergeant Preston and the great king. <laughs> you stay quiet, Sergeant, or you'll never crowd again. Down, King. Down, boy. Your partner's in jail, Dirk. He's made a full confession, and you're under arrest in the name of the Crown. Don't make me laugh. Here's the gold. Just put it on the table. I'll get it on the way out. All right. That's it. Now move aside. We're going to buy your dog team, Sergeant. Your buddies will find it in St. Michael's. You won't have any more use for it. Before I leave, I'm going to make sure that nobody follows me. Dirk stepped forward. The sergeant's hand was touching the pan of antiseptic. Dirk laughed as he advanced toward him. I can't miss it, this rain. The sergeant threw the pan of antiseptic straight into Dirk's face. My eyes! The sergeant rolled aside as Dirk shot. King! Dirk was screaming with pain and rubbing at his eyes as he fired at the spot where the sergeant had been kneeling. No! No! King hit him from the left side and the killer went down. He still held the gun, though, and he pressed it into King's side before the dog could grasp his wrist. He pulled the trigger. The hammer landed on an empty chamber. He had fired his last shot blindly into the floor. That's enough, King. You won't need this gun anymore, Dirk. My eyes. My eyes, I can't see. Your sight will come back in a little while, and when it does, you'll be able to admire this brand new set of handcuffs I'm putting on your wrist. Good work, Sergeant. Oh, I feel like... Well, I, I gotta sit down. I feel like standing up and cheer. You no. Know, <laughs> once I nearly drowned, when I came to, it was like... Like being bored all over again. Just just breathing. Just being alive. It, it was wonderful. Well, that's the way I feel right now. To be face to face with a killer. To look down the muzzle of his gun. But Jerry, old pal, do you realize it? The sergeant saved our lives. Yeah, give him the gold, Ed. Give him the cabin. <laughs> no, thanks, Jerry. I'll have my reward when the jail door closes on, Dirk, and I can say this case is closed. Oh, oh, oh. We 
we'll return in just a moment with a word about our next exciting adventure. Weekends are wonderful when you stay tuned to Mutual. Gay entertainment to suit every member of your family puts bright sparkle into your days of fun and relaxation. For anyone who likes quiz games, and that includes just about everyone, there's the kind you like where you can sit back and see how close the contestants come to the answer. There's music, too, of course, on Mutual's weekend schedule. Lowbrow or highbrow, you can take your choice. From full-scale productions of your favorite operas and operettas with all-star singing and dramatic casts to swing-your-partner sessions of real old-fashioned barn dance jamboree, you can take your choice on Mutual. Your need for late news headlines from the field of sports, as well as on the national and international scene, is not neglected on the weekend either. Fifteen-minute roundups plus brief five-minute digests come your way regularly. Gather your family around this weekend and enjoy entertainment on Mutual where there's something for everyone. All heard every weekend over most of these stations. Young Corey Lane slammed the door of Matt Deacon's cabin and started trudging down the dark main street toward the center of town, his head bowed against the storm. He had walked less than 50 yards when he heard his name called. Corey! He turned. Matt was standing in the lighted doorway. At that instant, a shot rang out. Matt clutched at the air and then slumped to the ground. Matt! Shot! Who did it? Who killed him? Oh, it doesn't matter. The whole world will think I did it. I'm going to be accused of murder. Don't miss this exciting adventure, Friday. These Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Adventures are brought to you every Monday through Friday at this time by the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereals shot from guns. By special recording in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System. They are a copyrighted feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated. Created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Fred Flowerday. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is Mutual, radio network for all Americans.